And so the first thing about the Sharia, if you are to enforce the Sharia, is that there must be no law above the Sharia. What Allah has made halal must be preserved as halal. No one must have the authority to make it haram. No one. So there can be no law above the Sharia. I think that is something easy for Ikhwan al Muslimun to answer, to understand. If you can understand it here in Sungai Bulu, why can't they understand it in Egypt? Is it possible today, my dear Ikhwan al Muslimun, is it possible to enforce the Sharia in Egypt as the supreme law? Is it possible? No, not at all. As you say in Malay, tabule. Why? Because this is the modern age. And in the modern age, you now have something called the United Nations Organization. Have you ever heard about it? Ikhwan! And the United Nations Organization has a charter, the charter of the UN. And the charter gives to the Security Council of the United Nations supreme authority in the world on all matters pertaining to war and peace and security, international peace and security, and they will define what is peace and security. You can't define it. So if Allah in the Quran gives a command and the security council gives a different command, which one will prevail? Come on, Ikhwan, answer me. This is Sharia. That is the charter of the United Nations. When you become a member state of the United Nations, you accede to the charter. And you therefore voluntarily accept that you will obey the Security Council of the United Nations. Regardless of whether the order of the Security Council is in conflict with the Sharia or not. So it is not possible to escape from the conclusion that international law prevails over the Sharia in the modern world. Well then, what do we need to enforce the Sharia? You need to have a territory which recognizes Allah's sovereignty and in which therefore there will be no law above Allah's law. What was this territory called in the past? Whatever be the name, it's not important. But it was called Darul Islam. It was called Darul Islam. So long as you remain a modern state and a member state of the United Nations organization, your attempt to enforce the Sharia can only be cosmetic. And that is an insult to Allah and to his messenger. It's better not to put your hand in that pot rather than to make it into something that is unpalatable for Muslims. Yes. Is it possible to restore Darul Islam today? If you want to restore Darul Islam today, you must have the military power to be able to take on all the forces in the world today which are ranged against Islam. Do you have that power? Do you have that power? About 20 years ago, in 1990, the Security Council of the United Nations wanted to adopt a resolution. A resolution permitting the use of force against Saddam Hussein's Iraq. 
This is the first war on Iraq. And uh, China was a member of the Security Council. And so was Yemen, so was Cuba. And so was uh, Malaysia. When the resolution came to vote, I think maybe Cuba and uh, Yemen voted no. And China probably abstained. All the Malay people in Malaysia, in Indonesia, in Singapore, in Brunei, were all, all, all supporting Saddam. All of them. Malaysian government voted in favor of the resolution. Dr. Mahathir explained. <laughs> he said, if we had voted against, or if we had abstained, upstate, they would have destroyed our economy. He was brutally honest and frank. Brutally honest and frank, Dr. Mahathir. You could not survive economically if you cross the line. <laughs> so do you have the military power to stand up to them when you don't even have the economic power? Huh? You can't continue to live in the comfort zone and stand up against them. No.